All right, hello everyone from Surat Game Show. So let us start this quiz on black and black printers and optics part one. Optics also, I'll give you some questions uh, tomorrow as well. So let's start. I'm ready to give the test. Three, two, one. The first question is a question on black and printers. A valve of Hasner. So two valves uh, I know one is valve of Rosenmuller that is at the junction of common canaliculus and lacrimal sac and Hasner is the most common valve and it is the most common site of congenital nasolacrimal duct obstruction also it is present at the lower end of nasolacrimal duct. The other also cross also but you don't require that just require Rosenmuller and Hasner valve that's why the most common congenital nasolacrimal duct obstruction is at the Hasner valve and uh, the treatment of uh, chronic nasal lacrimal duct obstruction in child less than 9 months is you do Krigler massage, external massage, it can break the obstruction less than 9 months. 9 months to 4 years, you take a Bowman's probe and you change the direction and mechanically break the obstruction. And after 4 years, you do dacrocystorhinostomy operation. Now, lacrimal pump mechanism means. A structure which is causing the tears to go from the lateral to medial and to suck into the punctum canaliculus and that is the closing of eyes the muscle which is closing eyes is creating a suction the muscle which is closing the eyes is orbicularis particularly if you attend my class I, I, uh, I told you that it's a pre tarsal orbicularis muscle Horner muscle is a specific muscle for lacrimal pump mechanism Answer is orbicularis. So, if there is an orbicularis uh, muscle failure, like in seventh palsy, Bell's palsy, there is a failure of lacrimal pump, there is watering of eyes. But that is not called epiphora. Epiphora is called only when there is a uh, watering due to obstruction of the lacrimal pathway. So, image question was there. In one of the tests, the doctor is. Um, he stained the eye with a dye and observed on a slit lamp blue light. And which dye should be used? Fluorescent light. Because uh, with cobalt blue light, fluorescent dye is used. And he asked not the patient to blink and notice the time for appearance of dry spot. Now, this is not a Sherman test. Sherman test is a strip, Sherman strip for aqueous. This is a tear breakup time. And uh, more time is a good thing because after more time, if the dry spot coming, that's a good thing. So tear breakup time after 10 seconds is a good thing. Normal value is more than 10 seconds and it checks the mucin component of tear film because that is responsible for appearance of dry spot. Vital staining is the staining fluorescein, rose bengal, uh, laser, uh, lysamine. That is a vital staining. That is staining of the cornea and conjunctive epithelium. Phenol red thread test is also for aqueous uh, of the tear film. So answer here is B. B for now which is not a function of tear film it provides uh, oxygen to cornea and nutrition to cornea yes washes away the irritants and debris yes facilitates the movements of uh, eyelids and reduces friction so bcd should be as a function of tear film it also is a bacterial lytic function lysozyme lactoferrin levels are there iga protease is also there but it has no role in maintaining blood ocular barrier that is not a function Now this patient has a recent episode of watering from eyes. After a few days, the swelling and redness developed over here in the medial side. Maybe there is a lacrimal sac problem and this there was an obstruction of the lacrimal pathway and there is a watering and this is known as epiphora because when there is a watering due to obstruction of the lacrimal pathway, then you call epiphora. That is true. Now if you press, you can't press over here because it is an acute dacrocystitis. An acute you can't press, you can't do regurgitation test. In chronic dacrocystitis, there will be swelling like this, but no redness and pain. Uh, no redness will be there. That you press the lacrimal sac, that is a regurgitation test, and mucus will come out. That is positive test in chronic dacrocystitis, but it cannot be done for acute dacrocystitis. That is the answer. And systemic antibiotic is needed for acute dacrocystitis, and chronic conditions require surgery. Surgery is dacrocystorhinostomy, that is making a opening between the lacrimal sac and the rhino towards the middle meatus and which bones you break in the lacrimal sac maxillary and lacrimal 
Now this is a pinhole device. A pinhole device is a subjective test because patient is asked whether the vision is improving with pinhole or not improving. In refractive error, the vision improves because the light goes from the center. The vision improves and plus 3 minus 3 adapter refractive error can be fully corrected by pinhole. So if you don't wear a pinhole, you can wear a number plus 3 minus 3 inside. You can wear a pinhole. Okay, very good. But if the light is coming from the center, if there is a central media opacity, the vision will decrease. So nuclear cataract, the vision will decrease, not improve. In macular degeneration, or the light is going from the macula, light is going to the fovea. So if there is a fovea or macular problem, the vision will decrease. So that is correct. But nuclear cataract, the vision will decrease, not because that is a central media opacity. Now this was a pre previous question just now in INICT difference in the color of iris is heterochromia iris. The word ametropia is refractive error. An iso means difference. So difference in refractive error is an isometropia. There is nothing like difference in axial length. Difference in visual acuity also there is nothing. And uh, what is the difference in size of the pupil? Pupil is known as chorea. So difference in size is known as an isochorea. So here the answer is B. Difference in refractive error is an isometropia. Now, if the patient has, so I'll give you a question based on this tomorrow. A hint. Now, this is a lateral view of the eyeball, and uh, one ray is focused before the retina, other ray is focused before the retina at different points. So, at different points means the patient has astigmatism. Simple hyperentropia, simple myopia cannot be the answer because in simple myopia, all the rays are focused in front. In hypermetropia, simple, all the rays are focused behind. So this is astigmatism, and both are in front, means compound myopic astigmatism. If one is on the retina, one is before, then it is simple myopic astigmatism. Simple hypermetropic means one on the retina, one behind the retina. So answer is B, compound, hyper, compound myopic astigmatism. So after the completion of retinoscopy, there are three steps of retinoscopy. It was a neutralization of reflex distance correction and cyclovigia correction. I'll give you a question on retinoscopy tomorrow. The vertical axis was 0 adapter, horizontal is minus 4 adapter. Means 0 means in the vertical axis the rays are focused on the retina. Minus means it is focused in front of the retina. That's why I'm giving minus. So 1 on the retina, 1 before the retina, it's simple myopic astigmatism. So that is true. And which is more steeper? Out of two axes, the one which is focused more in front as compared to other is more steeper. So minus 4 is more steeper, means the cornea curvature of horizontal is more. So horizontal is steeper, vertical is flatter. Corneal curvature of horizontal is more, that's why it is focused more in front. And horizontal steeper is known as against the rule, not with the rule. So D is the answer over here. Now how to solve this question without, I don't have pen and paper, I can solve this question. Plus 1 adapters by simple mathematics and simple English. Basic English can solve this question and basic mathematics. Now plus one adapter spherical. Spherical means, means works in all the axes. So plus one plus one is working in all the axes. We have only two principal axes. Vertical, horizontal, lateral level. So plus one is working all the axes. And the property of cylinder is if it is kept at 90 meters, it is kept at vertical axis. It will work in horizontal axis. Always at 90 degree to where it is kept. So plus one in all the axis. Minus three kept at 90 means it is working in horizontal. So plus one would be vertical and minus 2 will be horizontal. So plus means bef behind the retina, minus means in front of retina. That is mixed astigmatism. And the one which is more in front is more steeper. So minus 2 will be more steeper. That is in horizontal axis. Answer is against the rule astigmatism. So that is your 10 questions in ophthalmology. Tomorrow also will give you some questions on optics. And I am very much impressed. Many have you have got, oh, I have got only 9 because the one was missed. So many of you have got uh, 10 out of 10 and very happy for that and many congratulations and keep on going, keep on going this. The exams are just around the corner. If you keep on going, keep on improving. I'm seeing many improvement is there. So we'll just uh, do optics and squint questions uh, tomorrow. Don't ask me, sir, which uh, topic tomorrow. I've already told you, but still I will type in the groups as well. Thank you very much. Thanks for listening. Best wishes.